Here's my prediction. You ready for this one, folks? I think that coffee may get called as a witness to testify about his conversation with Sam. Hey, what's up guys? Legal Bro here. As you already know, I'm a huge CoffeeZilla fan. I've gotten a ton of great feedback on what CoffeeZilla exposed. I just try to add a couple of legal tips, not trying to take CoffeeZilla's job. He does a great job investigating and I got a ton of people asking for me to comment on his third video. That's what we're looking at today, CoffeeZilla third video. I tricked Sam Bankman Freed into a third interview with me, and this time he may have admitted to fraud. You'll be the judge. You can now I gotta stop right here. I'm gonna have people put me on absolute blast. And yes, at this time, Sam has already been charged. But let's see what CoffeeZilla is up to in hindsight and see if this admission is going to lead to taking down Sam. Explain the background, the strategy that went into this call to try to learn where others had failed, including, by the way, learning from my own failures interviewing Sam. Now, first, I want to give some background. Sam at no point has wanted to talk to me. Every time I've kind of snuck on these Q&As and started peppering him with questions, he usually leaves. But I realized that since this was my third time basically doing the exact same trick, it was probably going to be one of my last because at some point he was going to catch on. So I knew going into this, it might be my last chance to interview Sam. And because of that, I had to think long and hard about what the perfect line of questioning would be to really pin Sam down, knowing that he's a master at dodging questions. He's done it with everybody so far, including me, by the way. And I mean, look, I think we've got some great stuff, but to this point, I didn't think anyone had gotten that smoking gun. He always denies everything. He always has a sort of a loophole out of it. So I'd have to try a different tactic. And here was my plan. Sam's whole excuse about not being a con man all hinges around Alameda Research. Yep. Basically, he says he knew nothing of what was going on there because he was just the CEO of FTX. And while that's nearly impossible to believe that he's this stupid or incompetent, it's really hard to prove 100%. So I realized... That's the only place that I think Ray, the new CEO of FTX, is going to be able to give us the inside look. I'm sure that there's going to be evidence out there that Sam Bankman Freed is funneling money from FTX consumers to Alameda. He must have some back channel. I think that we're going to be able to find out exactly what's going on. And I don't think that we need the smoking gun paper trail to do it. As we learned from Ray's hearing, there's not a real paper trail. There was no accounting department. Every A lot of the major correspondence is done on Slack. So what does that mean? Caroline, 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 Caroline. What is she up to? If she's a red coat, if she turned on Sammy boy, all this stuff about Sam is going to come out and we're going to learn exactly what he knew when he knew it. If we're going to do this, I'd have to remove Alameda from my case, right? I needed to show that Sam had knowingly defrauded people without invoking Alameda at any point. And here was my plan to do it. I was going to spend the entire time laser focused on the FTX terms of service. Now, some of you may know FTX lays out that they cannot use. And remember folks, we've talked about this before, but in any consumer case, right? Like the ones that I do on a class action basis, we use the terms of service down below. That's the contract between the business and the consumer. You're agreeing to that. Even if you don't click on it every time, if you want to take a look, take a look at any business down below, they usually will have the terms of service. Now, certain businesses, right? Like if you're contracting with a lawyer, that's not something where you'd have a terms of service just by visiting a website. You actually have to enter into that attorney client relationship. But you go to other companies and it's like you just set up an account and it talks about privacy, data sharing. It talks about what they can do. That's what CoffeeZilla is talking about. And these terms and conditions are written by the lawyers for the company. And what are they trying to do? They're trying to carve out all of the things that are related to the dealings between the business and the consumer customer fund for anything. They can't trade with them. They can't loan them out. And I thought this was a really important point because obviously that money is no longer there. So clearly something must have happened. You can't trade with them and you can't loan them out. That's what FTX terms and conditions say about their consumer funds. And if I was going to succeed, I'd have to beat that explanation. And in the first couple interviews I did with Sam, I tried to go with like this insider angle where insiders I had talked to had told me something very different, but it didn't work. Go ahead and watch. There's sort of all this talk about the terms of service. Did you break terms of service? Did you not? You're basically claiming that there was this separate side of your terms of service. But I talked to somebody from Alameda and asked how big the position of like, or how many people had assets in the type of accounts that that terms of service would apply to versus the regular terms of service, which said you couldn't use their money. 
And they said it was about a billion that was in the margin trading or the, the margin like um, side of things where you could reuse their funds or whatever. No, there's only one question that matters and it's impossible for him to answer, I thought. So that was my strategy going into it. That was the backstory and how I learned from previous interviews. So without further ado, here's my third and probably final call with Sam Let's Bankman. Let's go, Free. baby. Get him coffee. Get him. I'm about to go up. Okay, coffee, you're up. Hey, Sam, it's me again. I just wanted to ask real quick about the terms of service question, which Rec brought up a little bit. I want to expound on it. Can you just tell us yes or no, were you treating client assets just on the regular digital asset side different from the margin trading side? Uh, I do think we we're treating them differently. Um, there were a, there were a bunch of different sides or more than two sides there. Um, but I do think that we that we I that we were cognizant of the fact that like there were differences between uh, uses for for like you know margin versus staking versus uh, spot versus futures collateral. Uh, versus other things. Yeah, just people, I'm just talking about people just, uh, you know, putting Bitcoin on the exchange. Yeah. Obviously, there was really clear. Uh Coffeezilla makes such a great point here. And Sam attempts to evade it at first. What does Sam say? Well, there's different types, right? You have margin, you have futures. Coffee goes back to his original point in that he says, well, Sam, we're not talking about any of these creative ways, right? That somebody can use an account. Think about your Merrill Edge account or your TD Ameritrade account, right? You can sign up for margin. That margin can then be used to purchase other things. So your your margin with any of those accounts is based off of how much you have in that account. So you can basically get a loan against the funds that you already have in. It's pretty complex. And guess what? If the price of what you've purchased, so your overall portfolio value goes down, you either have a to make up the liquidity gap and you have to put more money into your account or they will start selling off from your account, right? It's called a margin call. In this case, CoffeeZilla is saying, look, Sam, we're not talking about futures trading. We're not talking about margin. We're talking about people that just had an account with you. Just normal people that are consumers that you have access to their money. Uh, terms of service around that. If it's true that you didn't invest client assets, Sam. not even in treasuries, as you said via a now deleted tweet, yeah. why do those? Let's pause CoffeeZilla. I love it, baby. You gotta use what Sam is doing and what he's saying against him. FTX through Sam. Sam is on Twitter saying one thing about FTX and his terms and conditions say one thing about FTX and then come to find out Sam's not being honest with us, folks. His client assets no longer exist. So I'm trying to trace through some of this. Here's my best guess and, and I wish I could give you a more confident answer, but I don't have the data. Um, but my best guess is basically it's a combination of the following. Um, one piece is uh, the transfer sent directly to uh, uh, directly to Alameda Research um, uh, from customers. Uh, one piece, and that, that I think is a, is a I think a, a fairly substantial piece. Um, uh, one piece is- Wait, can you explain what that piece means? So people were sending money to Alameda instead of, they were getting credited on FTX and Alameda just ended up using those funds and they were never held up held separately per the terms of service well there was a separate legal agreement with that i don't know the details of it i don't have it in front of me but there's separate legal agreement with respect to transfers that were sent directly to alameda research uh by users um especially before um ftx had um its own bank accounts um and so I and that's real quick that's what Sam has tried to say all along is that well this is this relationship between investors and Alameda occurred long before they could use FTX to do it Coffeezilla about to expose him let's go baby I, I do think that that is part of what happened there likely let's focus on let's focus on only client assets that happened after FTX got a bank. Y'all said digital assets are treated a right. very specific way. This is perfect. It's like it's like our own inside first time deposition of Sam Bankman Fried. Coffeezilla doing an expert job of saying, you know what? Sammy's keeping it super broad. Let's hone in again. Let's not talk about the past and talk about what consumers had to do before they could do it on FTX. Let's talk about what happened when they could do it with FTX. Why were those digital assets not treated that way? So after so of of the remaining uh, piece and there there's a few other pieces as well um around features and other things i understand that's not what you're talking about um 
for the ones that you are talking about, right? For the ones that were left, and I'm again, I'm 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 just taking a stab at this because I don't have the data, but my my best guess is the follow is that there were a lot of those assets remaining. Um, we processed something like um, you know five or six billion dollars, I think, of withdrawals. Um, over the uh you know over the few days um prior to or i guess the few days you know during the crash and um there are still a few billion dollars of those remaining i think in the estate um and to- okay so ray has come out and said that basically there wasn't enough to satisfy sam is now saying that there are billions this is going to play out in the bankruptcy filing Let's figure out if there are any consumers that actually had funds left. The other issue is in these types of SEC cases, and I actually have one of these right now, like let's say you're one of the people that were able to sell out of your position. What the SEC may do is say, no, 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 you were given money that didn't belong to you and therefore you got to give it back. If you somehow got out of FTX and you were selling out of positions, just know if the SEC comes knocking, they could be asking to get their money back in some sort of restitution scenario. That doesn't mean you've done anything wrong, but it just may mean that you got to give it back. Because remember, the ultimate goal here is they have a million people that Sam's companies owe and they've got to try to make as many people whole as possible. Now, that doesn't mean 100% whole. It just means as good as it's going to get. You put those together, you have many billions of dollars of those assets. Um, But I think, and, and so that's part of the answer is that um, there were a large number of actual assets there. Um, I, I, I think there's one follow-up question you probably still have there, which is, well, how about people who didn't withdraw and were also in that bucket? And part of the answer is, well, there still do exist some number of billions of dollars of assets, of hard assets in the estate. No, is there one-to-one assets? Because that's the whole thing. We're talking about a separation of funds. So those funds should be a completely different, in a different place, in a different wallet than everybody else. Oh, CoffeeZilla, preach, 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 baby. CoffeeZilla is saying, look, if you were one of the people in one of these crazy categories that Sam's talking about, where they've got future trading and margins and all of these different things that are very advanced financial tools, those need to be in separate buckets than the average consumer that's just looking to use FTX for normal purposes. And by the way, the FTX terms and conditions say that 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 consumer's normal use putting their funds onto FTX will not be siphoned into some other place. It's going to remain in their account. CoffeeZilla is getting to the heart of the issue here, which is just like banks. If you went to the bank and you said, hey, I got 5K in my bank account, they couldn't say, well, unfortunately, Sammy, we've only got a thousand on us, but this IOU, you're going to want to hang on to this one. Think of the scene from Dumb and Dumber where there's like they open up the briefcase and it's got all these IOUs from all the money, right? They're in Aspen. Remember, they look into it, they pull it out and it's like an IOU for a Lambo or something. That's essentially what CoffeeZilla is saying here. You can't do that, Sam. You got to have one-to-one for the people that are not in these advanced types of financial products. What you talked about servicing billions of dollars of withdrawals has nothing to do with those specific digital assets because that's just first come, first serve, whoever pulled out first. We're talking about people who never agreed to have their funds loaned out, who never agreed to have their funds put on margin. They should have, according to your terms of service, one-to-one backing. It should all still be in some bucket somewhere and are you confident today as the ceo of ftx this has nothing to do with alameda are you confident today to say that you those are absolutely real and they exist and they're present people are backed one-to-one on client digital assets so i think and again this is i'm just taking a stab here but i think what happened um is that if you look at especially a lot of the withdrawals that happened um those withdrawals were not necessarily only coming from people who never used margin trading or futures or staking or anything else. Those weren't just withdrawals from people who were um, uh, were keeping one to one back or, 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 or were, you know, were, were sort of, you know, just keeping them as pure spot balances. Um, and it was omnibus wallets, you know, between the various categories. Um, and so I think that the answer to your question is that um, uh, is that a number of those assets um, were withdrawn by people who had balances on the exchange, um, potentially in the few days prior to the collapse. Um, and uh, and you know if you wanted to think about it this way, it could be that you know that happened, and then um, you know when when the collapse sort of completed, I uh, the. Um, th- that that effectively meant that there was, you know, if you wanted to put it this way, 
like uh, fungibility created during those withdrawals between assets uh, for people who had and had not uh, been using. But that uh, means that there is. I don't have any idea how Sam can sit here and say, well, I think I don't have it in front of me. I don't really know. Sam, look, Sam, we all know that you're a smart guy, regardless of the fact that your moral compass spins like the Bermuda Triangle and anything gets sucked in just automatically goes to die. But the issue is that you are the primary owner of these companies and we all know you knew what was going on. There's no separation of funds. If there's fungibility between two different buckets of capital, there are no buckets. It's just one bucket. Everyone's taking out of the bucket, which means substantially anyone who had your terms of service with digital assets wasn't actually subject to that terms of service. They were subject to the same terms of service of your margin trading, right? Which This is important. Think about it this way. CoffeeZilla is saying, look, you had these different silos of people. You had people that were margin trading, advanced financial tools, right? Futures trading. Then you had normal everyday consumers. You can't pull it all together because you don't have separate terms and conditions. They only had one type of terms and conditions. I think that's what Coffee's getting at. So the fact that you only had one, means that, well, either one's subject to one terms and condition or the other one's subject to the other. And you can't, you already said in your terms and conditions that you can't use those consumer funds to funnel other places that you've got it backed up. That's Coffee's point. Which is your more risky product. So you subjected everyone to the higher risk product because fundamentally, when it came down to it, you're saying there's fungibility. It's a dollar here, a dollar there. Everyone can take out a dollar as fast as they want. Don't you see that as like defrauding your customers, the people who trusted you to just say, hey, this is not gonna go anywhere except for we're not investing your assets. If, it, if I can exchange one to one, and I'm the one who put risky stuff on, on with risky um, assets with risky terms of service, I can take the money that someone who didn't sign up to those same risky terms didn't agree to. Isn't that fraud? So I'm specifically talking. Uh, got it. Woo! Sammy, come on, dude. You've been quick on your feet this whole time. And you sit here listening to CoffeeZilla say, hey, look, uh, wouldn't you agree that the terms of service that this person in this advanced financial product has versus this average everyday consumer. Don't you think that they should have known about one another if they were both combined in the same pool? You can't have minnows swimming in the same pool as sharks if they're all considered to be the same, Sammy. You should have let the minnows know that they were subject to the shark terms, right? To CoffeeZilla's point, if that was the case and you didn't tell them about it, and you were stealing money from you committed fraud your silence is deafening here sam talking about what happened in the days immediately um during and following the crash in that you know three or say so day period um and during that period um i think we may have allowed uh you know just generalized withdrawals i think that, that was um you know if you're saying that we should have held up withdrawals for everyone who had an open futures position, um, you know, for clawback potential or something like that. Uh, I don't know, maybe that would have been the right thing to do. I hear where you're coming from on that. Um, I felt, you know, at the time um, that, you know, we wanted to treat customers equally. It was an incredible- But they- Ugh, we wanted to treat customers equally. Really? That's your response to all of this? We want to make sure everybody was good. You know, we want to make sure everybody felt equal. Yeah, you can't do that. Everybody across the board is equal means that you are directly screwing the same people that you said you were protecting in your terms and conditions, saying that just keep your money with FTX. We're not going to mess around with it. Here's my prediction. You ready for this one, folks? I think that coffee may get called as a witness to testify about his conversation with Sam. Can you imagine the irony about all of this is that Coffee is investigating, he's exposing Sam and now he gets to testify against him? Ugh, get your popcorn ready, folks. They had agreed to different things so you can't treat them equally. I mean, it's like, this is the whole problem of the story of FTX and Alameda is all the funds were being commingled. Isn't this just another story of commingling funds except this is now FTX which you can't pass the blame to Alameda anymore this is your company your funds that you are treating all the clients the same when they clearly signed up to different terms of service and remember to coffee's point in previous interviews Sam has always said well Alameda was Caroline Ellison I have no idea I'm only in charge of FTX I have no idea what's going on but you did Sam you did 
So your funds that you are treating all the clients the same when they clearly signed up to different terms of service. So I, I just want to respond to that. And please, I completely respect your question, but you have monopolized all of these discussions, CoffeeZilla. You need to let others speak and you need to respond to what I'm Sam. Sam. Sam, Sam, I don't understand your strategy. One side of your mouth, you're saying, I'm going to tell my story to the world for the world to hear. I have nothing to hide. Dumb, but, but that is what you did. Out of the other side of your mouth, you're saying, hey guys, I'm going to talk and tell my side of the story. But people like CoffeeZilla, I don't want the tough questions. Don't ask me that. You've monopolized that coffee. Let some of the softballers come back in here and start pitching in here. We want that slow pitch coffee. We don't want any of that smoke. Sam, this is why I told you before you got arrested in my previous video to keep your mouth shut. Coffee's doing a great job here and Sam is getting absolutely lambasted. And by the way, Sam just showed his cards, right? He's getting uncomfortable by coffee's questions. Why? Be because coffee has got him surrounded. I'm saying and not grandstand as much here. I completely understand where you're coming from. But the, to answer your question, I didn't make a decision there. I just we process withdrawals as we normally do until it became clear we couldn't anymore, at which point we shut them off. I didn't do anything different. I processed the withdrawals until we had to shut them off. And it was the case that like at that point, um, there was a, a big liquidity hole. That's what happened. If you want to... A big liquidity hole that you created, Sam. Judge that process and think that like we should have been spending those days frantically trying to code up a new withdrawal process. Um, I disagree with you, but I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, sure. I think that's uh, fine. I mean, it's not about coding up a new withdrawal process. It's about treating your client assets the way you told them they'd be treated, right? It's a very different thing uh, completely. But anyways, I'll stop. Up. Yep, you hit the nail on the head, Coffee. One of the biggest things that you see in all these consumer cases is unfair and deceptive trade practices. What does that mean? Your terms and conditions have to align with what your actual company conduct is, what your policies are. You can't say in your terms and conditions that we only do this, we do this, we do this, and then and then in your actual dealings, you're really doing the complete opposite, or you're doing something that is completely deceptive and unfair. That That is the heart of all of these types of consumer claims. If you are going to do something, right, and I think in this case, not that it makes it any better, but Sam would have at least had in his terms and conditions, hey, by the way, we're doing some risky, you know what over here, buyer beware, right? That's kind of the old model. I don't think it's the greatest. I think a lot of consumers relied on him. Uh, grandstanding for Sam. Thanks guys. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. We got the call out. We got we got the shout out. All right, you can probably tell I was I was pretty excited about that because I finally got what I was looking for. A straight answer on the problem of funds, right? Sam explicitly says that FTX was not separating funds. They were allowing generalized withdrawals. The dollars were fungible from different buckets. You can't do that. We finally dodged all the BS about margin trading, about Alameda wires. We finally got to the heart of it, which is that there are no funds left over for the people who just ha should have had their funds separated because they never separated them from the beginning. Yep. Coffee hits the nail on the head here. If they had separated them from the beginning, there would still be money left over for those consumers instead. In Sam's words, not mine, there's a liquidity gap, meaning, sorry folks, there's no money left. They were always seemingly co-mingled. And although Sam wouldn't necessarily agree that they were always co-mingled, the proof is in the pudding. FTX owes billions of dollars that they do not have. And it's because of how they allowed withdrawal. To give you kind of a regular finance analogy about why this is so cataclysmically bad, and in my opinion, fraud. Imagine you banked at JP Morgan Chase, right? And you have your money in the savings account part. Well, then you find out that they actually had this risky hedge fund. And you know what? They actually kind of blew up. In fact, they blew up so badly that JP Morgan Chase, it's all shutting down. But when you go to the bank to withdraw your money, you find out that instead of keeping your money safely in your savings account, they had allowed the people in the hedge fund business to just withdraw, you know, first come, first serve, right? They treated all clients the same, according to them. Well, you say, well, no, that's fraud because you signed up to very different terms of service than the guy who knew he was going to be like. We may have to do a follow-up video on the 08 collapse and Glass-Steagall Act and all of those where it talks about how credit unions and 
commercial banks were not uh, permitted to kind of do business together. And then in, you know, 96 or sometime in the 90s, they merged together or they're permitted to, to work together again and sort of use those funds again. I like seeing Coffee do videos. I like I like his videos a lot. He does a really thorough job of investigating. And to me, that's one of the things that lawyers lawyers are known for writing and research and oral arguments in courtrooms. But one of the big things that goes into civil work, like the work that I do and the clients that I represent, is the investigative side. Really understanding the corporate structure of a company. CoffeeZilla does a really good job at that. If you like this video and you want to see others like it, comment below, like and subscribe. If you want to see what Sam was charged with, take a look at this video up here. I'm gonna break it down for you up here and we're gonna look at the charges that Sam's facing. Until then, until then, thanks guys.